Hello everyone, welcome to Shot and Battle. I am Divya and I am going to dictate you a legal passage of 500 words for Delhi District Court exam at the speed of 100 words per minute. So be ready for it. 3, 2, 1 and go. Having noticed the salient fact on which there is not much dispute, this court is firstly constrained to observe that there is no material or evidence to indicate what steps the corporation took between 30 April 1996 to 3 February 1998. There is not one shred of evidence to indicate as to whether any notice was issued to the petitioner during this period to participate in the disciplinary proceedings. As noticed above, although the order dated 24 April 1998 asserts that various dates had been fixed by the inquiry officer appointed on 17 February 1997, no such notice has been placed on record nor have details of any such notice been alluded to or disclosed in the affidavit filed in these proceedings on behalf of the corporation. Even the order sheet which stands appended along with the counter affidavit of the corporation refers to the dates which were fixed in 1996. On the above state of record, the submission of the learned counsel for the petitioner that the disciplinary proceedings were revived only in 1998 after a long spell of unexplained silence and inaction appears to have force. On 17 February 1998, the corporation, although being fully aware of the pendency of the disciplinary proceedings, proceeded to pass an order holding that the petitioner was permitted to retire with effect from 31st January 1998. This court fails to comprehend what authority inhered in the corporation to proceed with or continue the disciplinary proceedings or to inflict any punishment upon the petitioner. As noted above, no statutory provision, rule or regulation prevalent in the corporation was referred to or relied upon to sustain the continuance of the disciplinary proceedings after the retirement of the petitioner on 31st January 1998. Once the petitioner had retired from service, no authority vested in the corporation to continue with the disciplinary proceedings which had been initiated against the petitioner. Retirement of an employee cuts the cord which connects the two entities and severs all relationship of master and servant or employer and employee. The retirement of an employee brings the curtain down upon the relationship of employer and employee. Once this event occurs, no further jurisdiction or authority vests in the employer to inflict any punishment upon the employee thereafter. Even otherwise, the following facts also need to be highlighted. Admittedly, the inquiry report was submitted on 19 February 1998. A reading of the said report which stands appended as an extra 14 clearly shows that the inquiry officer has not recorded his satisfaction in respect of the guilt of the petitioner on the basis of any material or evidence on record. The only conclusion recorded by the inquiry officer is that since the petitioner did not cooperate with the disciplinary proceedings and that from his conduct 
it is clear that he does not want the proceedings to be concluded he had no option but to record a finding that the charges stand proved stop <laughs>